So this is an interesting question. It's one of those questions that comes up. That's kind of funny. <laughs> it's kind of funny after you've been doing this for a while. But it is, it's like, it's one of those funny things, but it's also one of those, it's one of those things that people get into their heads that actually can be very destructive to them. So I would like to know uh, if it is a good idea to achieve experience in desktop support prior to getting into a system administration and then network administration leading to security. Do you agree there should be experience to achieve before gaining other experience? So the whole question here is the whole, you know, the stepping stone thing. Before I be can become a network administrator, I should do desktop support. Before I do desktop support, I will do help desk. Before I do help desk, I will be an intern. The way to do it, you know, it's that whole idea. I'm going to go from the mail room to the CEO spot. Um, and what I will tell you is in the real world, that's generally what happens. I mean, in the real world, that's how it goes, um, but no, but no, hells no, hells no would I say this is the way to do it, and frankly isn't the way that I did it. Um, again, uh, when I got my first real job in enterprise IT, uh, the only experience I had had was in Army Electronics that had nothing to do with NT 4.0, and I got thrown in so far over my head, it was ridiculous. Like literally, the only the only reason I even accepted my first job, I swear to you, the only reason I accepted my first job is because they told me I would get three weeks of one-on-one -on -one mentorship. When I was sitting there and they were talking to me because we had to administer the telephone systems, we administer the uh, the network systems, we had to administer, do the desktop support, and we had to do site build. I'm 23 years old doing like half million dollar site build outs. Uh, and so I sat there and I was looking at the guy who would hire me and I said, you know, this is way over my head. I mean, th th it wasn't even close. I, I, I couldn't polish this turd. It was so, I mean, basically, I, I had my, my Army Electronics training. I had finished the, the 80 hour MCSE NT 4.0 class, and I had finished like three tests. So, you know, again, I figured I'd go into desktop support or something. This job was so far over my head. And so the guy, you know, the, the, the person, he really liked me. He liked my motivation. Again, you know, the reason I got hired, he, he liked my motivation. He liked my dedication. He liked that military experience. He liked all the things that he, you know, it wasn't the experience I actually had in technology. It was, it was the, uh, it was a personality I brought to it. And so he said, no, what I'm going to do is we have a really good guy in Denver. We're going to fly him out here. He's going to mentor you for three weeks so that you get an idea of what's going on and then it'll go back. Obviously, he can't teach you everything, but it was like, okay, well, th no problem there. If I, if I get three weeks of mentorship, sure, I, I can do that, right? So I get hired, uh, I get brought in, and I'm looking around. I'm like, yeah, so did that guy get flown in uh, for my mentorship? And I'm talking to the, bo the, the boss guy who's now left and got in Denver, and he said, oh, yeah, sorry to tell you, but he got fired uh, last week. <laughs> I'm like, um, okay, that, that's great. What, uh, what on-the-job training am I going to get? Yeah, well, we're trying to figure that out. Uh, okay, okay, whatever. So, I, I, you know, hey, they hired me. Hey, they hired me. If they, if they screwed up, it's not my problem. It's like, uh, okay. So I go in, and I, ha I have a partner for this particular position because we have the entire Northeast region. And um, so, you know, I'm talking with the partner, and the partner's like, okay, well, you know, that guy's not coming out, so I'll take you to one of our offices and start to show you what's going on. So we go out to the Philadelphia office, and we're sitting there, and she's doing whatever the hell she's doing in the, the server room. And frankly, I didn't know what the hell she was doing in the server room, and I'm just kind of kicking back like, I don't, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I mean, it was just like, I was supposed to get this on the job trading. So, uh, so you know, she's sitting there. She gets a call, and I hear these swear words coming out of the, uh, out of the server room. And uh, I'm like, hey, what's going on? And she says, well, this switch uh, at the Pittsburgh office failed. Uh, so they need to send in a new switch uh, to, 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 to swap it out. So basically, we had a, a, data, a data systems uh, uh, data comm department in Denver, and they they literally managed all the Cisco equipment from Denver, you know, and they managed it until something failed. You know, if something physically failed, you had to swap it out. So she said, "Listen, um, I know I know I know you've only been here a day or so, but can you just drive out to Pittsburgh? Um, all you have to do is basically pull the Cisco switch out of the box." plug, you know, uns unscrew the old one out of the server rack, throw this one in the server rack, make sure everything's plugged in, 
put the return label on the Cisco switch, ship it back. That's all you have to do. And I'm sitting there. And again, like I say, I know now is Eli the computer guy, 38 years old. You guys are like, wow, Eli is cool. But again, I, I know, I mean, this is back when I am a noob, right? And I was sitting there. It's like, um, so all I have to do, all I have to do is screw the switch into the server rack, replug everything, right? She's like, yes. It's like, so all I have to do here, she's like, yes, Eli, can you just go and do this? So I think, okay, this is no big deal. I get to drive four hours to Pittsburgh. I get to swap out this switch. Hey, that's, that's not a bad life, right? You know, I'm getting paid good money, blah, blah, blah. So I'm, I, I drive out to uh, to Pittsburgh. Um, I find the switch. I find the bot. The, the switch. I go there. I talk with people. Say I'm brand new. You know. Um, you know. Go down there. They they have the switch on the floor. I open it up. I look at it. Uh, okay, this is interesting. Uh, look in the server rack. Oh, there's a switch. Unscrew the switch. Put the new switch in. Screw everything up. Call the datacom. Hey, can you guys see the switch? They say, Yeah, we can see the switch. They do a couple of tests to go. Okay, you are good to go. I'm like, great. That was easy. I'm an IT guy now. So I put it up, I put the return label on the box, and I, I set it to the side. So I go up to the manager and um, uh, of, of that particular office, and I'm like, okay, well, I swapped out the switch, uh, so I guess I'm going to go now. And he's like, what do you mean you're going to go? I said, well, I swapped out the switch. And he said, we haven't seen an IT guy in three months. And I was looking at him, and I was like, yeah? Okay, what does that have to do with me? <laughs> He's like, that's your position, right? And it's like, well, well yeah, yes, um, yes. In fact, my position is to support this office like this. Um, but I haven't really been taught what to do. And the manager looked at me and was like, well, I need somebody to go down and start working on some of these problems because we haven't had an IT person here in three months. We have real issues that, that are, are keeping us from doing our work. You're the IT guy. Go fix some stuff. And so I sat there and I called up my partner and I was like, hey, hey, guess what? Yeah, apparently, apparently they have not seen an IT person here in three months. And there's a little silence on the other side of the phone. And she says, yeah, that's probably about right. <laughs> and I'm like... Well, they want me to fix some problems here. Um, should I do it? And she's like, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is your job. So, yeah, why don't you see what problems you can fix? And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> so I go down. And I'm like, so, guys, <clears throat> what problems you guys got? And so they give me this whole list of problems, right? So I go in and I start fixing problems. And, um... Oh my God, it was miserable. Oh, it was so miserable. So I just start fixing problems. And then um, the first thing, like the first thing that happened is, you know, when you sit there and you find out, like doing it's really not too hard. And then so I sit there and I see like, um, what is it, like some updates need to be run and all that kind of stuff. And so I run these updates and I'm feeling pretty good. And then I go to this one computer and I work on it and it just dies. It just crashes. Again, this is old NT 4.0, Windows 98 days. Windows 98 in the enterprise. Yay, right? And just crashes and dies. But I'm feeling good here. I'm feeling good. Like, I feel like a little, like, I fixed a couple of computers. Like, I took off AOL. I removed AOL. Because back in the day, AOL had this really screwy thing where for one of the versions of AOL, if you installed AOL, it literally turned, like, turned off your network card. It wouldn't allow you to use any other networking other than AOL. Um, so we didn't have group policies back then. So all these Yahoos would install all this crap on their systems. And one of the things they would do is they would install AOL so they could get AOL Messenger, which would then shut them off the network. So I fixed these things. So I was feeling better. And then I go and I start working on this one computer. And it just crashed. It blue screens of death and dies. Right? Which as I came to find out, was a kind of normal thing. And I'm all freaking out, like, oh, my golly, what am I going to do? Um, so uh, so um, it's dead. And then I'm, like, looking around. I'm like, where the hell are disks? Where are, where, where are you guys' disks? And I'm like, what do you mean, disks? I think they keep that on the network. <sighs> I'm like, okay. So I try to call my partner. My partner's not there. So I call one of the other contacts I have for one of the other regions. And I'm on the phone with this guy. I'm like, hey, man, um, yeah, I'm the, the new guy. I just got hired for the, like, the Baltimore region. Uh, listen, I got this, this computer that crashed. Um, no big deal. I think I can fix it. I, I just need the NT 4.0 or whatever, the, the, the CD, so I can reinstall it. And so, uh, so like, where are these CDs kept? 
or where the disk's kept. And he said, well, um, you know, since this is, you know, enterprise, we keep everything as ISO files. So there's a Windows 98 or Windows NT 4.0, whatever ISO file out there. So you just take the, the ISO file, you burn it, away you go. And it's like, oh, wow. Well, that's easy. That's no problem. So, so where is this ISO file? He said, and basically, this is what I'm told. It's like, just go on a network neighborhood, um, and it's on one of the one of the servers, one of the shared folders. Okay, that's not too bad. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm not even making this up. I'm not even being melodramatic here, right? So I'm sitting there, and I'm still like the new. Like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Get, get off the phone. Don't even take a look while he's on the phone. Yeah, okay, clang up the phone. I go, I open my little, my fancy IBM ThinkPad I'm so excited about. I go to Network Neighborhood. I double click Network Neighborhood. <laughs> there were 200 servers on Network Neighborhood. <laughs> and that was the point I just realized everybody, I think, was just screwing with me at that point. So I, I kind of gave up on, on trying to be too, too much of a good guy. And I just went through and drank some coffee and wasted some time clicking through until I finally found some ISO files and then ended up fixing things and away you go. And what I found with that whole, when I worked for that company, is that's how I got thrown into everything. I got thrown into telephone systems with not, not, not knowing how to do telephone systems. I got thrown into half a million dollar build outs not knowing what the hell is going on. I got thrown into all of these things not knowing what was going on. And the reality is, is in, that, in the time period I was with that company, I got, I got 10 years worth of experience. You know, we talk about that with experience where do you really have 10 years ex experience or do you really have one year experience uh, that you simply repeated 10 times? That's what a lot of people do. And for me, it was, I mean, like it was, it was you were thrown into the mess and there was no sink or swim you just got to swim it really it was it was absolutely uh ridiculous and true part of that story so once i finally got my my feet under me like four months later probably about about it took me about four months before i really grasped what was going on i got some of the appropriate training i was supposed to get all that kind of stuff and so i went to the human resources person um at the time uh and i sat down and it was just another one of those days everything was going insane um, and I sat down with the human resources person to talk about something. And then finally, at the end of it, you know, me being me, I, I just looked at her and said, Stace, can I ask you a question? She said, uh, what, what's that, Eli? I looked at her and I was like, I don't really understand why I got hired for this position. And I felt comfortable to say it at that point because I was doing a good job. Like, so it's four year, four months down the road. So at this point, everybody's happy with me. I've created a rapport. I'm doing all the work I'm supposed to be doing. So I feel comfortable saying this without screwing myself. But I look at her and go, you know, I'm doing fine now. I'm doing fine now. But like four months ago, I mean, it has been a hell of a learning curve. I, I, I honestly, I'm not really sure why you guys hired me. And she looked at me <laughs> without missing a beat. Oh my golly. She said, uh, you were the cheapest candidate. <laughs> and I looked at her. I was like, excuse me? She was like, yeah, you, you, you were the lowest cost guy. And, uh, and the manager, you know, he, he liked your motivation and all that. But yeah, that's why you got hired. I was like, oh, well, good to know. <laughs> good to know. And that's a weird thing, like without businesses and all that really worked, is literally, I was working on half a million dollar projects. I was working on these really expensive things. And yet they were nickel and diming over my salary. Like my salary, my salary was nothing in the scheme of everything that I worked on. And yet that was the reason I got hired. Again, one of those little things to be thinking about. But so, no, I, I, don't, I don't believe in stepping stone. I mean, I believe that generally that's how you have to do it. I mean, that, that's generally how it goes. But no, if you, if, you can, if you can slot yourself straight into a systems admin job, go for it. Go for the highest level job possible. Um, if you can skip all of those small layers, um, there's, there's, no, there's no shame in that. There's no bad stuff in that. And the other thing you do have to realize is, again, I try to motivate you guys uh, by telling you guys, like, the small projects teach you a lot about the large projects. So when you're sitting there and you're negotiating with your mom about fixing her computer for $15, a lot of the things uh, that are part of that transaction are basically the same as when you're negotiating with a CEO over $150,000, right? You have the client sitting across from you. You have to explain why paying you is worth it. You have to explain what the problem is. You have to explain all of these things. It's the same process, whether it's a single server, whether it's a whole rack, or whether it's a single PC, or whether it's a whole rack of servers. But 
those kind of skills uh, translate uh, into as you rise up the ranks. A lot of like the technical skills really don't. I mean, if you are, you know, up to your eyeballs in server 2012 and Linux servers, you don't really have to be an expert at Mac. You don't have to be an expert at Outlook. You don't have to be an expert at Windows 8, right? You know, all of that technical, like, there's the, the the technical knowledge you have to know uh, for for troubleshooting desktop computers and doing help desk. It isn't necessarily applicable once you get higher up in your career. You know, once once all you're dealing with is servers. There are people that all they deal with is servers. They they basically own 500 servers, so they have to know Server 2012 really well. They don't have to know Windows 7 at all. Um, and so that's one of the things to be thinking about as you progress in your career. There's a difference between troubleshooting skills. There's a difference between sales skills. There's a difference between interpersonal negotiation skills and the skills as in actually knowing what checkbox does what. Right? So a lot of you guys, what you do is you really focus on all this client computer crap and you don't realize all that client computer knowledge, the knowledge doesn't translate uh, to the servers. It's the troubleshooting skills. It's the, it's the mindset. It, if this doesn't work, what is the next thing I should do? Um, so no, if you can skip ahead, if you can skip ahead, skip, 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 skip as far as you can. Skip as far as they are stupid enough to allow you to go. Because again, I mean, that's where, you know, I talk to you guys about the real world of technology and one of the reasons that I am here in this business today. And I will tell you, if I had had, to, if I had honestly had to start at the help desk level, I'm not sure I'd be an IT geek. Because again, right, um, you know, I got in at a point where a 23-year-old could have a direct line to the travel department who could do all of this stuff and was just told to go. Like I say, there, get it done. Like, <laughs> I mean, that was the thing. I would be on the phone with these higher-ups be like, I literally don't know what to do next. And they said, you'll figure it out. They, they didn't say... Wait right there and we'll send somebody over. They didn't say, well, what you need to do is, they said, we hired you, it's your job, deal with it, right? And that's, that's the kind of thing that I like. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, no, no. If you can skip help desk and desktop support and all that kind of stuff, definitely, definitely, definitely.